Joining me now, the Vice Chancellor of Aligarh Muslim University, Lieutenant General Zamiruddin Shah, a man very much at the centre of controversy this morning. General Shah, let me start with a simple question: Why are undergraduate girls barred from the Maulana Azad Library at Aligarh Muslim University, whilst there is no such restriction for undergraduate boys? Let me tell you that the undergraduate boys are staying on the main campus. The undergraduate girls are staying in the women's college, which is three kilometers away. Now, people in Delhi tell me what is three kilometers. Well, in Aligarh, it is a large distance when you have to either walk or travel by rickshaw. So they are separated. The distance between the women's college and AMU, the road is particularly nefarious. Activities by by the gundas of Aligarh. Our students have been trying to take control and ensure peace and order, but the gundas always okay. uh, hold sway. They have been chain snatching. So, one of the reasons is security. Let's pause there. Your Secondly, sir, let, let's pause at that reason. I'll yes. I'll let, let's pause at that reason. I'll come to the other reasons in yes. a moment's time. If security is a genuine concern yes. and you're scared that the girls will suffer some sort of mischief as they travel the three kilometers between yes. the women's college and the library because of chain snatchers and gutters, then surely the logical solution yes. is for the university to provide safe buses and transport, not to bar the girls from the library. Security shouldn't be a deterrent. You are it's a challenge, and you should you rise to providing right. security. Mr. Karan Thapa, you are absolutely right. The university was debarred from purchasing any vehicles at all. For the last so many years, we've been requesting to purchase the vehicles. It is only a month back that we have procured two buses which we have given to the women's college. The second reason Who stopped you? Can I, can, 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 in the women's Just library. a moment. I'll come to the second reason in a moment's time. Who stopped you purchasing vehicles when it was needed essentially for the security of undergraduate girls? Who stopped you? No. Look, there are several reasons. Please hear all of them and then ask me questions. But well, let's talk about them one by one. You're saying you were stopped from providing the vehicles that would have given these girls security so they could access the library. And I'm asking you, who stopped you buying the vehicles? Absolutely. Who stopped you? No. Oh, MHRD, the, no permission was given to purchase any vehicles. You're saying to me that the human There was resource... a total ban. There was a... Listen, please. There was a total ban on purchasing new vehicles. Was the ministry aware that these vehicles were essential so that girls could access the library and that by not giving permission they were denying the girls access to the library? Was the ministry made aware of that? I'm sure they must have been aware if their buses meant for the Aligarh Muslim College, uh, Aligarh Muslim University. Obviously they must have been aware what? that we are deficient of a large number of vehicles and now finally we have got the vehicles. Now shall I proceed ahead? Uh, just a moment. I just want to clarify this. You're saying obviously the ministry should have known, but did you yourself or did the university specifically make them aware that failure to give permission for vehicles was preventing girls accessing the library? I'm not aware if we had told specifically that they're required to convey the girls to the library. That would have been a very small reason. The buses are required for various other duties also. All right, you're saying to me, that the buses are now available and within two months you'll have them. Are you therefore saying that two months from now this so-called security concern will no longer exist? Hopefully. What do you mean hopefully? Either yes or not. Why are you saying hopefully? Hopefully yes. Yes. Well, yes, yes hopefully now, yes. All right. Come now to your second reason for debarring undergraduate girls from the library. <clears throat> the second reason is they have a library of their own. It is well equipped. Uh, All books in the Alana Azada, uh, Maulana Azad Library are available to them. The entire catalog is available. I'm sorry. The girls have to give their demand and I'm the books are made available. I'm sorry, sir. I have to contradict the, you. I have to contradict you, which is why I'm interrupting. Gulfiza Khan, the president yes. of the Women's College Students Union, and I presume she's a young lady in some knowledge and therefore speaks facts. This is what she said to the Indian Express this morning. The condition of the women's college library is not great. And then she added, at least allow us to get books issued 
even if you cannot create space for us to sit? Why should we have to rely on teachers or send a request to another library for a book from there? So two things she's contesting. First of all, she's contesting that the library in the women's college is as good. She's clearly saying it's not. And secondly, she's saying they cannot even access the books. Leave aside, enter the library and sit there. Even that permission to access books is denied. They have to go through teachers or they have to go to another library. She's contradicting you. I am afraid I have contacted the librarian and the principal today morning only. The principal has given me a totally different version. The, the, uh, the uh, books are available pl in plenty. The books at the Molana Azad Library, the demand has to be given and the books are delivered. You can, uh, you can ask the principal, she should have reported this to the principal. Well, I, I, I have ascertained the books are available. All right. May I make a suggestion? Given that the president of the Women's College Students Union is clearly contradicting both you and her principal, I suggest that as vice chancellor you should clarify the situation because it's now in the national press that those girls believe A, their own library is inadequate and B, they don't even have access to indirectly access books. So I would suggest as vice chancellor, General Shah, you should if clarify this with the girl concerned immediately. I, I certainly will, Mr. Karan. I certainly will. Let's come to your third reason. Okay. Let's come no, to your no. third please, reason. Please, please hear me out. Third reason is Maulana Azad Library is meant for a limited number of students. It was built when the strength of the university was 7,000. At the moment, the strength of the university is 28,000. It is open 18 hours a day. I can tell you, Mr. Karan Thapar, I invite you to visit AMU you will not even find space to stand. What to talk of finding a chair for yourself? You may be right, General I have Saab, to limit the numbers. But I need to interrupt you again. If space is the reason why you are debarring undergraduate girls, then surely the logical and more importantly, surely the fair thing to do is also debar undergraduate boys. And if you don't want to debar all boys and all girls, then debar people from both sexes in equal measure. But why just hit girls alone? When you simply segregate girls am, and say yes, they can't go, you. it's sexist. Uh, it is not sexist at all. The undergraduate boys do not have a library like the women's college. It's plain and simple. They are living on the campus. So that is why, the re why should I impose restriction on people who can access books without any problems? Except I that the women's library the is not as good. Except that the women's library is not as good. I've just quoted Gulfiza Khan who said so and she's the president of the Women's College Students Union. Obviously, obviously a college library will not be as good as the Central University Library. Thank you. You're conceding my point. For drawing books. But don't you see? No, you're, you're, no, you're, 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 do you know what the consequence of what you're doing is? You're saying that girls have to make I do know with exactly the second best. I know exactly what I'm talking, Mr. Karan Thapa. No, sir. What I'm pointing out is the consequence. I know exactly what I'm talking the, about. The consequence I is that exactly girls are about. forced to use a second best library. Boys, because of the good fortune of living on the campus, can use the best library. Girls, because they live off campus or three kilometers away for no fault of theirs, for absolutely no fault of theirs, are forced to use the second best library. And I put it to you again. Is that fair? Mr. Mr. Karan Thapa, that is the reality of life. I am, I am going to make the library facility available to as many students as possible. Now let me also tell you, when the girls projected this problem, I said, we have now got the buses, we will examine your request, Th plain and simple. What you have heard on, on the, the, the version of my statement ha is only a very curtailed version. It did not give my latest latter statement, which said, we will examine your request and try and make the facilities of the Maulana Azad Library available to you. I concede, General Shah, that we have, on that video that was made public, may only have heard a curtailed version. I concede that. The problem is, even that curtailed version was deeply disturbing because there, you had another reason for denying girls access to the Malana Azad library, and it's that reason that I want to come to. You said that if girls were given permission, there would be four times more boys, and that would create a huge distraction. And I put it to you, not only is this reason sexist, Mr. but it Mr. is also Karan disrespect Thapa. to your male students. You're guilty on both Mr. counts, forgive Karan me, Thapa, General Shah. I 
I stand by my statement. I am not going to retract it. It was used as a simile. You understand what a simile is? I do indeed. But how is this a simile? It was not meant to be. What exactly is this simile is illustrating? Simile. Well, what it, is it illustrating? Similes illustrate things. What are you illustrating? It is, no, look. It was meant as a simile and not as a per se. Yes, but a simile. I do not a by simile any means. Illustrate no, illustrates something. A simile illustrates something. That's what yes. that particular phrase means. It what are you illustrating? It 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 illustrates the problem we'll have in case we burden the university uh, library with more and more students. But hang on Next, a moment, General It was sir. not meant to be. For hang on a moment, you say it illustrates the problems the university will have. Now, this is what you said. If girls are given permission, there no. will be four uh, times more boys. Are you saying me. that your boys can't resist the company of girls and will flock like herds? Because that's what's being no, illustrated I by that not. simile. No, please listen to me now. I do not in any way mean to demean my girls at all. I in no way mean to say that the boys will misbehave with them. Plain and simple, our boys know how to behave with girls. It only means allowing additional students who have a library of their own would only make the conditions at the library unbearable. They will not even be placed to stand. You know, I'm very glad to hear you say you're not demeaning your girls and you're very glad to hear you say your boys know how to behave with girls, in which case I can't understand why you said that if girls are given permission, there will be four times more boys. Clearly that suggests that your boys would flock to girls because they don't know how to behave. And then you went on to add it would create a Who huge says? distraction. Who says? I I'm never said that. You. I never said I'm they don't know how you. to behave. I'm saying the implication. I did not say they don't know how to behave. General Saab, the implication of saying please that four recheck, times. Please recheck your recording. It's not a checking. My boys in the university are well behaved. And please do not try and take words of my mouth which are not intended. I'm not taking words the, into the your mouth. The students of AMU. Shah, I'm simply coming to the, the students, logical the conclusion of, of what AMU, you said. The logical conclusion the of what you said AMU. when you said four times more no, boys will turn up if girls are given permission clearly suggests those boys will be misbehaving. It is a it is a simile. It is a simile which only means that there will be an unbearable rush at the university, plain and simple. I do not want to demean the girls. I did not want to say anything adverse about the boys because they know how to behave. All right. Let me put this to you. I, for argument's sake at this moment, will accept your answer that you didn't mean to or want to demean the girls. You were casting no aspersions on the character or behavior of your boys. The problem is, Smriti Irani, the HRD minister, has deemed your statement to be an insult to daughters. She sought an official explanation. How are you going to explain and convince the minister that this was not a deliberate sexist remark on your part? Let me tell you that she has not asked for an explanation. She has asked for a clarification. I repeat again, it is a clarification. We have given the clarification. Aren't you splitting and hairs? when I meet Mrs. Smithy Rani, I will tell her that I always refer to the girls as my daughters. And I'm glad that she is also accepting the same. She is entitled to her own opinions. Let me put this to you. Two or three times in this interview, you have gone out of your way to clarify you did not mean to demean girls. You did not mean to cast aspersions on your male undergraduates. Let me therefore ask you, will you now accept that you phrased yourself very poorly on Monday and what is required from you is not just an explanation of what you meant, but very possibly an apology for having said it wrongly? I will not retract from my statement. I am quite clear on that. I have told you it did not mean to demean the girls. If people who are now pressing for them, if they have misunderstood, my apologies. That is all. I am telling you, my girls do not expect me to, to uh, throw jokes at them. I do not take liberties with them. I meant what I said. If people have misunderstood, I am offering them my apology. I am just clarifying that, Lieutenant General Shah. If people have misunderstood you, you are readily and yes, willingly apologizing. If people have misunderstood you, you are readily and willingly apologizing. Have I understood that correctly? 
There's, uh, I cannot hear you, Mr. Thapa. I want to clarify for the audience by asking you to repeat what you were saying, because I think it's so important. You said that you were willing to apologize to those who had misunderstood you. Is that correct? I would like, I would like to say those who have misunderstood, misinterpreted my statement and taken offense to it, my sincere apologies. Now, the problem, General Shah, and I am grateful for that apology. I think many people will say it's welcome, even if some would think it's a little belated. But the problem is that many of your students are deeply disillusioned with what's happened. Let me quote to you the Aligarh Muslim University Student Union President, Abdullah Azam. He's told the Hindu this morning, the Vice Chancellor's statement is irresponsible and in bad taste. What do you say to the president of the university's students' union? The president of the students' union is entitled to his own views. He too has misinterpreted what I said. It was a simile. It was a, in no, not intended to demean my girls or to demean the boys. I will clarify once I meet him today evening. Do you accept that as vice chancellor, because you spoke loosely or carelessly and were misunderstood, your image has been lowered in the eyes of the very students who should be looking up to you. I am afraid you are mistaken. My image is where it is. You can ascertain from the students. My image is what it is. They know that I am here for the good of the university. I am here on a mission and my, my image remains untarnished. I am certain of it. You're really saying to me that your image has not suffered at all as a result of this very sorry episode? No, it certainly has because of the attempts of the media to malign me for wrong reasons. It is an attempt by the media to malign me and Aligarh Muslim University. It has certainly suffered, but certainly not in Aligarh Muslim University. Is it That's what matters to me most. Is it fair to blame the media? They simply reported what you said. You may have expressed yourself badly or poorly. Is it fair to blame the media for that? It was hardly a matter to report in all the channels. It is always the case. Look, uh, Mr. Karan Thapa, I am well aware of the efforts of the media to criticize Aligarh Muslim University. If similar things happen anywhere else, it is neglected or not reported. Aligarh Muslim University gets the attention of the media, which I think is undeserved. Are you suggesting that the media has a bias against Aligarh Muslim University, that it is targeting and picking on your university, and that too deliberately? I am not making an accusation. You yourself know it quite clearly. The whole of the country knows what the biases are. You know exactly who is being targeted. Are you suggesting that Aligarh Muslim University is being targeted because of the word Muslim in that name? Is that what you're suggesting? It's coming very close all. to that. Not at all. Not at all. The whole country knows that the name is Aligarh Muslim University, but it is a secular university. It is not being targeted for that reason. So, you're, so why then do you believe the media is picking on your university? You talked about everyone knowing there's bias. What bias are we talking about? I'm asking you to clarify what you're perhaps the, hinting. Well, the media will, can only answer that. I do, or the entire student community knows there's a bias, and I cannot give any reasons why it is happening. Are you saying that you're a victim? Why should we be a victim? No, we I, will fight. We are not scared of anybody. I'm going to come back to my last question. We, are, I, we, we, feel, we feel no sense of uh, of discrimination or victimization. victimization. It's very strange you should say that because when you say the media is picking on you, that suggests very much that you see yourself as a victim and a target. Are you not contradicting yourself now? No, I am not. We have never felt victimized. We have always had a fair deal. I am telling you frankly. But for two or three incidents where we have been victimized very badly by the media. I am going to come back to a question I asked you earlier. Because I do genuinely believe that that perhaps is the cause of this problem. I'm prepared to concede that you didn't intend to be sexist. It wasn't your meaning 
The words you used, however, clearly conveyed sexism. Will you therefore accept that the language you used on Monday was inappropriate and wrong? Maybe you did it accidentally, but you used the wrong words and you used the wrong phrases. Can you concede that? Mr. Karan Thapa, I said I meant what I said. I do not retract from what I said. I told you I used it as a simile. And if you also have taken offense, my apologies to you. I haven't taken offense. I ask you, do you think if you used it as a simile, you used the wrong simile? Would you accept that that was an error then, using the wrong simile? Well, that is your, your impression. I felt I used uh, whatever I know. All right, General Shah, let's leave it there. My thanks to you for agreeing to this interview. I'm grateful that you were willing I, I to I would like time. to add one thing more. Go one ahead. thing more, Mr. Karan Thapa, if you will hear me. Go ahead. Uh, I am being painted as an arch conservative. Let me tell you, I spent 40 years serving my country. I know what secularism is all about. I know the empowerment, the importance of empowerment of women. All I can say is, I am a rational realist. And that's all I would say. Thank you very much. I hope it will clarify my stand. I hope it does too. Lieutenant General Shah, and let me add, as an army officer and a very senior one, you have the respects of this country. It's only your comments as a vice chancellor that brought upon you criticism, which you've now at least apologized for to the extent of saying that you apologized to those who misunderstood you. I wish you'd gone one step further and said, you agree you use the wrong simile, but it's your right to stand by what you said, as well as the manner in which you said it and the language you use. Once again, my thanks to you for agreeing to speak to me. Thank you very much.